Hey guys, it's Hyperfixated here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm a graduated professional game developer and I have been hyperfixating on Armored Core thanks to this uh, upcoming game, Armored Core 6. Uh, I have played like half of, of the series now. Anyways, I wanna today I want to analyze this new gameplay footage. Bandai Namco has released, or rather, FromSoft has released through Bandai Namco, right? Uh, and I wanted to analyze it uh, as a game developer from a game game design standpoint. So let's get to it. I have made another video analyzing gameplay footage for Armored Core 6, so I have already touched on some points about the gameplay, actually many points, it was a long video. So first of all, graphics are amazing, right? That's normal. Lighting is great, some indications in the, in the, in the scenery. Uh, there's this thing in visual design where you will look to what is shinier, to what is more uh, illuminated, right? What is brighter. And so you will look in this instance at these points of the screen. And of course, where you have to go. It's a beautiful scenery. Uh, textures are very well done. The 3D models are great. And shaders are amazing. These effects are crazy good. All right. I have stated all, all these same things in the previous video uh, and I am stating those again for for those of you who are new to the channel but now let's get to actual gameplay which is I would say my forte since I am a gameplay programmer and a game designer so first of all I love these scenery elements there are these trees uh, later in the video We'll see cars, and uh, these help you make you feel the size of your Mac, of your Armored Core, of, of your AC. Now, energy management is different now. This is the energy bar. In other games, uh, when you depleted 100% of your energy bar, you would have to wait for it to completely charge back for you to do anything that uses energy. It is the case now too, but the, en the energy charges back so much faster that it fundamentally changes how you will approach combat. Uh, depleting your energy bar won't be the end of, it, of the world, so you can just play a tiny bit more reckless, a tiny bit more aggressive. Here, the, the narrator states that Assault Boost is used both for combat and traversal, which is exactly what I have stated in my previous video, anal analyzing the gameplay footage we had back then. Uh, as, I th as I've said in that video, uh, this is great game design for basically you're killing two birds with, with one stone, you will free the player's minds of having to learn two different things. Uh, the player will have to only learn one thing, which is a salt boost for both traversal and combat. This is great. All right. So, yeah, I haven't talked much about the about the HUD, right? So. 
We have the stagger bar. There is a right name for it, but like stagger bar. Uh, right below it, we have the energy bar. Here on the left, we have... Man, this game looks amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, another scenery thing. These roads, right? Like, you're so much bigger than a, like, three or four trucks. One, one, one on top of the other. Uh, yeah, here's... Uh, going back to the HUD now. We have your, li your life, basically. And uh, how many repair kits we have. The scan has a meter, so you can spam it. As I've said in the previous video, I don't think that's really important. I don't see how someone will, <laughs> will want to actually spam the scan feature, but all right. Yeah, this game is just so much more aggressive than previous Armored Core games. Maybe Armored Core 4, like the, the fourth generation at least. But um, this to me feels like on another level. Right, see right here. All right, they skipped it. But like the the energy bar refills so, so fast, right? Uh, on this reticle, we see... Oops, where's my mouse? All right. We see the enemy's stagger bar. So there is this very interesting game loop where you will attack the enemy uh, with weapons that deal more damage to this specific stagger bar. And then, when it's staggered, you will choose the weapons where... Uh, the weapons that do more damage, right? You will want to have these two loops. This, this is great too. I have talked in depth about this customization screen where I go through some design principles. If you want, you can check that video out. Mission briefings are very similar to how they were in the 4th gen. I haven't played the 5th gen yet, so uh, I don't know if it's like this there, but I do think it is. Uh, in the previous generations, so like 1, 2, 3, uh, these were not that, that cool. Like, uh, there was a text box and someone reading over the text and that, that was basically it which was fine actually but these are very much appreciated this looks very cool This is so cool. Right, so... First, get through all that dust to make contact with the Strider. Here, we're up against an enormous weapon that eclipses our AC in size. Right, so now we can, we can talk about the soft and hard lock controversy. I have talked about it previously, but we had no access to gameplay footage that had the HUD on. So we couldn't really analyze it like this, but now we do. And what I want to say about it is, uh, now hard lock is called target assist, and it makes so it, it makes it so that the enemy is always centered on on the screen, and most importantly, makes our AC automatically quick turn to face them. Here, we can see an example of. The not hard lock, the not target assist. This is a normal 
soft lock the Armored Core series has always had. You and uh, if you don't ac activate the target uh, target assist, you have to manually quick turn whenever you want to do so. But like if you do activate the target assist, the game will automatically quick turn for you. So it is a very powerful asset. The target assist being present makes a ton of sense because of the new controls actually. The main weapons plus the shoulder weapons are all tied to every shoulder button there is. So like L1, R1, L2, R2. Uh, so this means that movement stuff like quick boost and jumping is tied to the face buttons. Like square, circle, triangle. So unless you're open to doing stuff like uh, the ultimate claw grip, you won't be able to easily control the camera at the same time as pressing the face buttons. Hence, the implementation of target assist. And by the way, Vati from Vati Vidya <laughs> asked uh, Yamamura, one of the game's developers, about the hard lock in PvP, and one, of, and one thing Yamamura said is exactly what I said in, a, in the previous video I made, analyzing the Armored Core 6 gameplay, which is, when you're hard locked to, an, to your enemy, your movement becomes anchored to them. It makes you predictable. And as stated by Yamamura-san, uh, soft lock might make you harder to hit, more, predictable, more unpredictable. <laughs> Which is exactly what I said. <laughs> this is great dialogue, great delivery. There really aren't that many cases where I was laughing, where uh, where I was laughing at uh, Armored Core dialogue in the other game. So this is great. <laughs> this is a great addition. Let Let us see. Right. So I would also like to talk about gameplay pillars. Right. In, also, in the, in the previous video I made, I said uh, how many of the game's mechanics lead to more aggressive play, even in the thumbnail. And lo and behold, as stated by Fighting Cowboy in his latest AC6 YouTube video, he talked with the developers and they said that the main pillars, uh, the main words that define the game are aggressiveness and burst. This burst thing makes a lot of sense when analyzing the stagger state and all. Also, I love this. This this AC design is really reminiscent of the first three generations of Armored Core, and this warms my heart. And they, this guy also has a very weird gun, <laughs> which I love, <laughs> like these solar panels. I want to see. Uh, so it's it's this pulse gun, I think. All right. There is also gun reloading, and uh, energy weapons uh, won't uh, normally reload, they overheat, so you can use them more sparingly, so as not to make them actually overheat, and this makes for a simple way of, of engaging with the same reloading mechanic in a different way, so again, great game design there. I really like this boss because like uh, there is this bullet hell going on thing with 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 them, and this makes for a very different gameplay dynamic, right? Because you will have, have to focus on your movement, and it's great that this is a uh, one of the first bosses you will encounter when playing the game, because you will have to learn how to move right from the start. This, <laughs> love this man. <laughs> what is this, bro? Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So this video doesn't go uh, over some stuff that other YouTubers 
shared footage on, like OS tuning. Uh, OS tuning is basically you have the, the ability to upgrade your Mac and upgrades feel good. That's why evolving in Pokemon feels so good. That's why people love RPGs and why there are RPG systems in every AAA game nowadays. Which is something I actually don't like. Because <laughs> I feel they implement it in a very shallow way. But that's besides the point. The cool thing about upgrades being technically optional and repair kits being a thing instead of just more health is that crazy people can do these no upgrades run or no repair kits run, you know? Uh, metagame. A game inside a game. A game you created inside the game, right? Like the Nuzlocke challenge people do for Pokemon. That's great stuff. So here we get this extended look from some of the clips we saw in previous trailers. Great stuff, man. Now, I want to go back in the trailer because there are some things I still want to talk about. And uh, like, for example, um, apparently you can share, share your AC builds online, as stated by Iron Pineapple's AC6 video. This, alongside having the ability to spectate matches and probably get grab footage of it, is like instant marketability for the game. When players share their builds online, plus their online matches, they are essentially doing free exposition for the game. So FromSoft, FromSoft clearly knows what they're doing. Uh, this is not exactly the case here, but uh, there are there is this new mechanic where enemies can be unaware of you, so there are surprise attacks and you can go and take a ton of damage and this is pretty cool because it leads to a new way of engaging with the game that really wasn't pre present previous games so there is something for everyone here something else I wanted to talk about that really actually isn't all that related to this gameplay footage is about mods so this is the first Armored Core game to come to PC and this opens the gates for mods this so like apparently the multiplayer is just versus uh, 1v1 and 3v3 as st as stated by the developers in some of the YouTubers' questions they made, I can't remember which one it was, but they stated 1v1 and 3v3. I don't know if there will be or not 2v2. Weird to me, but alright. Uh, anyways, but the thing is, there might be no co-op. So, why do I want to talk about mods uh, in this case? Because mods can open the gate for let's say more multiplayer modes or like 2v2 or like I don't know some crazy shit like uh, you control a boss from the game I don't know it's possible uh, but what I'm really interested in is like uh, invasions from the Dark Souls uh, Elden Ring etc uh, series of games where you're you're like playing on your own, you're doing this stage and suddenly uh, appears, suddenly a player appears out of nowhere, out of thin air, online, and, lay, and they try to kill you. And it's really fun actually. It's uh, a really fun mechanic that I think works really well with the, the whole mercenary uh, mech thing that uh, both Armored Core and actually many other games and uh, Max Media uh, represent where you, you will be on your mission and then some asshole comes in and they wanna destroy you. This happens like a lot in Demon X Machina. Uh, it's actually a bit overused in that game, but that's a topic for another time too. Anyways. 
Again, I love uh, that melee now has combos, by the way. This is <laughs> this is especially great for me. Another thing about the scenery, you just saw a truck there. Jesus, where is my mouse? Just saw we just saw a truck here, right here on the left. Uh, this is great because it makes you feel like really big. But here. There is this really interesting, interesting thing in this game where they also want to make you feel really small in comparison to the world, the corporations, and how can they like convey that? One way is by this. <laughs> you are so big. You're like much more powerful. You can than normal people, regular people. You can smash normal humans, but. If you're against a, uh, this is not a corporation actually, as stated in the mission, it's from the rebels uh, protecting the, the planet Rubicon 3, which by the way, you are attacking, you are the villain, like always in these games. Uh, but uh, still, it makes you feel small, the, 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 the fact that uh, you are like, uh, as said in the trailer, one of uh, Handler Water's hounds. You are still being controlled, even if you are an AMAC. So even with one of the greatest power fantasies you could have, uh, like a giant robot suit, killing machine, you are still subject to big corporations. You are still subject to the social system you live in. Uh, to the cruelty of this system. Anyways, this isn't really game design, but I, uh, I it kind of is, but not uh, the more gameplay mechanics sense of it, right? Anyways, by the way, level design is great. Uh, there is all this verticality, which is really important in a Mac game since you fly. I love this part. Th this makes it look like a medieval castle. Th these lamps here, great stuff. Uh, especially coming from a developer like FromSops that actually made like these more medieval themed games like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, etc. I also like that um, Armored Core duels, let's say, uh, are back, not only the giant bosses, we knew this this was coming anyway, but like, it, it's great to see in here, uh, because that's the real test of the player's abilities. Y you as a player, you see like, okay, this guy has the same, has access to the same weapons, the same uh, equipment, let's say, right, the same mech parts that I can have access to, and uh, so... This is a test of my actual might. If I can do, they can do. If they can do, I can do. Then the only thing that can be taken from this is the player is better. The player is a great... The player makes... This makes the player feel like the great pilot. They probably are or they probably will become. Something that I have stated in the previous video, uh, analyzing Armored Core 6 gameplay, is how, for example, in this game, like generations previous, but not all, not, not all of them. So, like uh, in Armored Core 3, when you melee attack, you you will automatically follow the the enemy closest to you. In Armored Core, Last Raven, for example, you don't. Uh, this game has a bigger focus on melee, and uh, so it makes it important that there is this uh, lunge, this following lunge the player does automatically. If you played Armored Core, Last Raven, you know how hard it is to hit someone in a mech action game when you don't have this feature. So that's really appreciated and uh, makes a ton of sense given the game's pillars with aggressiveness it's easier to hit the enemy so you will do it more 
um, melee action puts you right in front of danger, so it's th the aggressive choice of gameplay, right? You can shoot from afar or you can go face face, laser sword to their faces. This is peak aggressiveness, so it goes well. Also burst, right? Which, as I've stated, are the two words they would like to define the game with. Now, I'll be honest here. For now, I will leave it at, leave it at that. If I do end up thinking of more stuff to talk about, I might make another video. But for today, that's it. I'm sorry if this video got kind of rambly. I just don't have the time today <laughs> to make an actual constructed script like less video, like less time. But um, actually, less in, in this last video I made analyzing the gameplay, I did touch on most important points I could about the gameplay for, for this game. So yeah, that's it guys. I'm super stoked, super excited, super hyped for Armored Core 6. It's like the second game I have ever been as excited like this. The first being my favorite game ever, which is Kid Icarus Uprising for the 3DS. This game I was beyond excited. Uh, and this is the next one. This I'm a, It's absurd what is going on in my mind. Um, anyways, anyways, I hoped, I hope you guys have taken something from this video. I hope you guys had fun. And uh, if you liked this content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos I have made and stick to watch more more stuff like this and more stuff like video essays, that kind of stuff. I intend to do these along the, the next days. Anyways, thanks guys. Cheers.